Hey, what's up? Lee Ron here, and in this episode of Painting Masters, we'll be looking at works by Takumi Yokooka. So even though it's a double L, it's not U, it's O, Yokooka. Uh, he's a Japanese watercolor painter whom I discovered through Instagram. I actually don't know much about this artist. I have been looking a bit, digging a bit online and translating a lot of web pages, so I have very, very little information. But as for the artwork, it's really beautiful. It's an interesting combination between realistic and a little stylized. So what you get is is very often when when work is too realistic for my taste I don't like it as much but in this example there is a hint of editing and stylization that creates a bit of a, an interesting mood and atmosphere uh, so I actually really dig uh, his work and in addition to that I love Japan and I love seeing Japanese views so I hope you're gonna enjoy this one let's jump into it look at some of his works so we'll get started with this cat because it's one of my favorites uh, and it's actually one of the ones that you can immediately tell is watercolor because of the realistic nature of some of the other paintings. Um, I really love this one and the simple concept here really is or the basic the, the main concept here is the negative space. Uh, essentially we get the cat by creating the negative space around it uh, and I love when that space behind has this saturation and interest in it um, and there's a really nice mix here of all of these you know turquoises and green blues and then purples and even some uh, oranges peaches yellows uh, I really like that one more interesting thing that probably a lot of people will be curious about is the technique for creating this look for the fur um, and um, it, there could be multiple ways of achieving this and I'm actually going to show you a couple of others where the means he used are a little clearer uh, but I will say for sure this can be uh, done by masking fluid maybe this was done by the way by masking fluid I'm not sure um, I think this could have been done by masking fluid or scratching this looks like it was scratched out uh, because you can tell there is a bit of a dark border um, around the the light area uh, and that usually happens when you scratch something out uh, it could be opaque paint though I don't think so at least not for these uh, but I could be mistaken if you know then feel free to drop a comment down below and obviously the main body of the cat that's just the brush marks so very gentle brush marks indicating the different textures uh, of the fur uh, and notice this there is a really nice transition like a wavy pattern uh, like this you see with lots of individual strokes but the important part is first they're very light and second they're merged together in areas where it that allow for it so look at this thing here it doesn't feel like a lot of individual brush marks like for example the the strands of hair in the uh, in the silhouette or outline it feels like they're connected and this is really important because a lot of people tend to overwork the texture whether it's fur cloth whatever this is a good example of how not to overwork it even within the shadows where you can really see that and by the way sorry if you can hear the beeping from the outside but even in the uh, lower sections of the texture uh, you can see that it still feels like one shape even though it has a bit of a distinction in it okay so just another thing to uh, think about and, and I love the creativity of how this negative space works one more really cool thing is look at the ear it's really lit because the the skin there tends to be so or the the you know the the thickness of it is so it's so thin that light shines through and you can actually see it it's really interesting um, so I love the rendering of this cat let's look at some more so here's a classic one there are a couple of views here um, these landscapes are really close to what I would consider too realistic for my personal taste as I mentioned in the intro but it's still not as uh, realistic so what happens is I really enjoyed this impression I love the way uh, he approached it uh, the colors are fairly natural um, and could be thought of as boring but if you look at the greens there are, there's actually quite a lot of variety here you get the more classic regular green but as you move to the sides you'll see uh, a lot of greens with hints of yellows hints of reds even um, hints of blue in them hints of purple uh, so there is some variety now if you just even look at this tree trunk uh, it has everything in it starting from orange then moving to purple um, if you look at this um, I guess lamp or you know some kind of a um, uh, what do you call it I forgot the name uh, it starts with a very uh, warm shadow and then moves into a little bit of a cooler one so there is quite a lot of variation in stylization it's not fully 
realistic colors just that you know in, in the boring sense of the way there's actually quite a lot of thought that went into creating this which i really appreciate i love this painting and i love the serenity of the scene like it's so easy to get caught up on the small details when it's realistic because you judge it as a very realistic painting but let's take a step back and look at it. this is amazing look at the ripples so beautiful look at the reflections here and a lot of it was i assume achieved with masking uh fluid uh, if you look at these uh, blades of grass, that looks like something that was masked and later removed. Same for these flowers that are a little lighter than the main bulk of the of the bush. Um, a lot of these things here, I think, were left with some uh, masking fluid. Uh, so yeah, that's another. There are very cre creative and natural ways of using um, masking uh, fluid that will look really good, actually. Uh, let's move on to the next one. By the way, I see I have a low battery on my camera, so I may stop and restart the video. Did I say low battery? I meant to say low space. Um, I had low space on my camera. But in case, next one, uh, another beautiful painting, really serene quiet peaceful which i love and as i mentioned i love japan i love manga comics and i love the views i love the cherries and how they blossom uh, a lot of very beautiful views that i am actually looking forward to seeing in the future when you can actually travel um so I'm, I just enjoy seeing these. I'm totally biased towards even the simpler quote-unquote uh, views here because Japan has this very um, nice look to it, very, um, how, do, how would I say it? It's like they wrap it up. It's like a, a beautifully wrapped gift. I don't know what, just everything there is very aesthetic. You know, they, their sense of aesthetic is really interesting. Uh, here's another one. I would assume same cat. Now look at the eyes. That's really nice. Uh, the way he caught the shadow from the eyelid falling on the actual eye. Um, that's really, really nice. And same thing with the fur here. If you look at this uh, section down below, again, you can tell the texture, you can see all the brush marks, uh, but it's not overworked because it's light enough and it's merged together as much as possible in the places where it's possible. So that's a really nice way of adding the texture and avoiding overwork. And by the way, I know a lot of people don't really uh, necessarily relate to this style or prefer to use a more impressionistic style, looser style, not to show every uh, strand of hair. But I think it is worthwhile to try out a couple of these just to know what it feels like to work on such a painting. And then maybe you, you'd want to utilize the same concept for a specific painting in your more impressionistic work uh, that will still make it look really nice. Okay, so don't don't um, immediately uh, say you're not going to do it because it could be a good experience, by the way. Um, so yeah, here we have another cut and here you can see. Uh, so the way this looks to me, you know what? I actually can't tell. I would guess that it is um, masking fluid, but I don't know. I can't say for sure. I think all the whites here are masking fluid, most of them. Uh, but I really like this one. Again, this, this strong background. This is genius. This spot here, I love it. And it's orange and purple, which are really nice uh, secondary colors. You know, they, they complement each other nicely. It's a nice color harmony. Um, so, yeah, this really made me love cats. And now this one I wanted to show you for uh, an interesting reason. So the work is very realistic. But look at the nice imp interpretation of the cat in the reflection. Uh, so I don't know if that's what it looked like in the picture taken or whatever, but I do think there was some artistic liberty here. And look at how nicely this looks, how you can immediately read it, read it as reflection. And I think that's a, a big part of, you know, even if the picture was perfect for painting, maybe there are some thing you, things you want to change. Maybe there are some details you want to remove. And I do think he made a deliberate uh, decision to remove this uh, the details specifically on the reflection. And one more thing, two more things I want to show you actually. One is look at how beautifully he captured the transparency. So you can see some of this fence from behind through the cat because it's a reflection, which is really nice. You can see everything pretty much uh, just behind it. I wonder how he achieved that effect. Uh, could be multiple ways, could even be with opaque paint, but I do think maybe in this example it's not opaque paint, it's, it's actually um, leaving this area uh, with a bit of a lighter wash and then adding these very weak touches later. And the second thing I wanted to show you was the beautiful light here and shadow on the ear. Look at this ear, how it obstructs the light. So light reaches it, uh, past this point it can't reach it, so you get this nice shadow and then it casts the shadow onto the face. Uh, same goes for this area of the eye. Um, I love these plays of uh, light and shadow and 
these angles, you know, very often a specific angle will bring out the best out of a reference, uh, out of a subject, if you will. That's that's a really good um, exercise. And if you're painting still, I've tried rotating it, especially if you're working natural sunlight, but also if you have like a projector or something, try rotating the object to find the interesting angle that will provide a nice um, outline for the light and shadow. That's a really interesting concept. Uh, here's one that uh, I just... I kept wanting to remove from the ones I look at because the image quality isn't as good, but I just love it. I love this. This is genius. Um, the rendering, and I'm going to show you, we're going to finish this with a very realistic painting, even compared to what we've seen here. Um, but this is just super realistic in a way. Look at this, like a, just a small tree branch chilling in the water. You can see the ripples around it, uh, some leaves as well, some maybe rocks you can see under it, or maybe it's moss. Um, growing on the water surface and you get these uh, lovely plants a very regular kind of scene in a way but if you look at the the technical skills that must have that it must have took to get these leaves to look like that look at the attention to light and shadow i bet this is a bit of a larger piece than you would think initially um, I may be mistaken, but I, very often this is the case with paintings that are so detailed. It just takes some space to get all of these details in. Um, look at these leaves. It's really, really good. Very accurate. Very, very accurate. The values are on point as well. So you can really tell the distinction between, for example, here, the part of the leaf that's in the sunlight and the part that's in the shadow. It's a beautiful distinction. The ground underneath it that's more in the shadow. Um, and I, I am curious to see how this one was made, something like this. I think like part, small part, one small part at a time, very slowly uh, and deliberately. That's what I would assume, but it's always fascinating to think about it. And there are smart ways of uh, making the process more efficient. If you know what areas you fill, you can go over large areas with masking fluid and uh, with maybe just normal masking tape and mask away, away some parts. Uh, there are very smart ways of uh, covering this. You want to check out Nita Engel's book, by the way. I reviewed it in a different video. Nita Engel. Um, I'll try linking it somewhere if I remember. Um, her book is really uh, good. It's about uh, using these revolutionary techniques and tricks to get very realistic effects. Uh, let's see what we have here. So a couple of scenes with people and more of the city, uh, which I really like. Again, not my style of choice necessarily, um, but I do love the subject matter because, again, I'm biased towards Japan. And second, uh, I really appreciate the skill that went into it. And uh, I don't know, it's just beautiful. Uh, the people's character is really caught here, like uh, this woman. This is really nice how she's holding the phone, maybe calling a friend or I don't know. It's just really good. Uh, let's see what else we have here. A bunch of other scenes with people. Uh, and these are really interesting because these, these essentially, it's the most obvious way to capture a story uh, because the people are here and things happen. <laughs> They're talking, this person's holding the backpack. Uh, this person's taking a picture with his baby. Uh, it's just the most straightforward way of telling a story. And this person taking a photo, so good. I love the accuracy here. Uh, this cast shadow is lovely in my opinion. Uh, really frames nicely the lower section. Now look at the light and shadow on a macro level. If we zoom out a bit, this section is so nice. The orange, yellow, and red uh, just works so well uh, to balance with the rest of the scene. There is a mirroring that happens here. Uh, this background is kind of sent really to the background, but if you look at this section, the top, you know, top maybe left top corner, uh, you get all of these yellows and oranges and reds. But then if you look at the bottom, it's, it kind of mirrors the same shape, only with purples and blues. Uh, and that creates a really nice distinction. Now, one more thing is that red, this bright, beautiful red uh, here on the bridge. Uh, really clever. I think it's a clever composition. Um, everything here is kind of burnt due to the light. You know, you can't see some of the tree barks. It's just paper white, probably. Um, just really, really nice. Let's see what we have here. Here's another one. This is a more classic against the light. Uh, I think this one was light from the side, obviously, yeah, because of the bridge uh, shadow. Uh, here it's more from the side, but also from the front. So uh, you get this very classic watercolor look in a way, but with a lot of distinctions, a lot of separate colors. Um, really, really nice. And a lot of attention to detail. You see all of these small 
uh, edges. You know, very often I would take back what I said before because very often I would think it's a larger piece when it's a smaller one and the artist just simply is painting carefully and is taking care and attention for the small details. So uh, it's not necessarily a large piece, but it is a really good one. Um, reminds me of Skip Lawrence's book, uh, the whole idea of designing with light and shadow. That's really nice. Um, here's another one. The key point for me here was uh, this nice little... Okay, so if you look at the right corner, you get a dark tree, very light background. If you look at the left area, you get a light tree, very dark background. So it kind of reverses them uh, in a way. It's just really good. It's just a really good rendering. Now, if you kind of squint your eyes, it will immediately become obvious to you that all of these marks that are lighter are uh, masking fluid. I would Here I'd feel much more comfortable to guess it is masking fluid. All of these small shapes, squiggly shapes on the ground as well. What very often will happen is you can apply uh, you can apply some masking fluid, apply a layer, and then on top of the layer you applied, apply more masking fluid. So you'll get different levels of lightness within the areas that you masked. Uh, because if you look at this, it's masked, it's almost fully uh, white. But if you look at, sorry, <laughs> if you, that's the next one. But if you look at these areas, uh, it's not white. Because maybe there was another layer on top of it. Now, there's always the possibility that, um, that hmm, it's interesting. Maybe all of these areas were masked together, but then the wash went, hmm, you know what? No, that has to be two separate layers, I think. So in any, in any case, that's the first thing. Now, the second main thing I wanted to show you is, look at this tree here again. The way it's portrayed, first off, it's not as dark. It looks dark because it's contrasted with the lightest section of the, sections of the painting, but it's actually not that dark. And it's, like, if you look at it, it's brown, it's red, it's al almost fiery uh, in a way. Obviously it's brown. If we zoom in till it's painful, you'll see it's red and a bit of purple and a bit of hint of orange yellow, but it's so warm. Uh, and, and it gives the feeling like the sun pours through it. That's a really nice effect to get. Very often if you paint against the light and you'll have maybe a top of a building with maybe there's a pole on it or something like that, a very interesting approach is to use very warm colors on that. It just feels like the light is pouring through the object from behind. Um, or may very often you'll see the borders uh, of the object, the center of the object a little... Hmm what will it be different parts of oh yeah, yeah yeah okay so the edges of the object with warm color in the center with cool so it feels like the light is almost wrapping around a tree like this is the tree bark it's, it wraps around it just wraps around it and pours through it that's really a nice look uh, that i love and again not necessarily my type of subject uh, matter not necessarily <laughs> look at these three blue leaves that's really nice not necessarily my typical um favorite uh, subject matter, not my favorite necessarily style, but this really works very well. This is almost photorealistic. This is really nice with the mountain in the background. I just love Japan, so I love these types of views. Um, this has a bit more of an illustrative feeling to it, on the other hand. It's very realistic, but also if you look at this tree, you know what? I don't know. I don't. Let's not put a label on it. It's just really nice. Um, Here's another one. I'm just showing you. These are these I sent. I uh, saved for the end because it's just views that are beautiful. Uh, it's not necessarily a different subject matter, but it's views that are beautiful. Uh, leaving this, you know, area lighter than the sky. That's that's tough. That's a challenge. And look at this uh, power line or whatever, the electricity pole, street light. Uh, I love these gradual transition. Very often I would just go and merge this shadow with the side shadow and have a very um, slightly blended edge but here he really took care of defining the different shapes so it's a very different style than going very loose and impressionistic and i love it it's just good to see these different subjects another one uh, just lovely look at these the, the poles on the bridge uh, the different elements on it there's a small i don't know what it is like a birdhouse or some some kind of a box that's really nice this has a f really old retro feeling to it this section especially with the woman here this is really, really nice. Uh, and the reflection is very clever. You really need to sometimes focus to see things as they are. Like understanding that the reflections are actually a very muted light brown over blue and then it transitions to green. It takes some time to detach, uh, quote unquote, from the reference and see it for what it is. This was, I'm pretty sure, achieved with masking fluid again. 
which allowed uh, Takumi to go really blended here in what happens around. Uh, hopefully you can see my cursor around the uh, the highlights. So yeah, that's really, really nice. And lastly, so I wanted to wrap up with this because I think something about how he rendered this one in particular is even more realistic than everything we've seen so far. Um, I don't know what it is. It's definitely in the green of the leaves. That's just so good. Look at this section here. Look at that. That's really, really nice. The flower, everything works really well for me here. Um, I really like it. Composition, colors, um, and very accurate drawing, very accurate values. Just beautiful. Look at the edges of the leaves. Like, not a lot of people go into these details. You see this edge here, it's a little lighter. This edge, just so nice. Uh, so yeah, if anything, this may encourage you to try and go a little realistic. Even if you like Impressionism, I once in a while, for the even if it's just for the challenge, um, I love to do that kind of a thing and see where it gets me. And look at, for example, this shading on the flower. It's um, not the wild, crazy, uh, warm, cool, you know, it's just yellow to orange. Um, so you don't have to go crazy, especially when it's in the context of a larger piece. You don't have to go crazy with every light and shadow. And very often, I don't want it to be an excuse for being too lazy or not being skilled enough to portray things as they really are, because they may be a little more boring. And you may choose to portray them in a more interesting way, and that's that's amazing. Uh, or you may choose to do that because you are you feel unconfident, unconfident, inconfident lack of confidence in portraying them as they are. So whichever it may be, just make sure you do things um, out of a deliberate place. In my opinion, that's a good place to aspire to. Okay, do whatever you want. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this one. I really appreciate you tuning in. And now let's wrap it up face to face. I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, let me know in a comment down below which artists you want me to cover in the future. I'm always open for suggestions and I have a long, long list. I do know that a lot of people want me to cover Turner. That's coming, okay? I have, I have a long list and I plan on getting to everyone because I'm continuing with this show. It's really fun for me to do. Uh, so so you can expect a lot of artists and very often you'll give me a suggestion and the next week it's gonna be out because if I really like some kind of a look in particular that I'm being sent I'll just make an episode on that so thank you so much please do subscribe if you still uh, haven't and make sure you're still subscribed I've received a couple of messages of people that were unsubscribed and also leave a like and a comment down below these things really help me reach more people I want to thank you so much I will talk to you again in the next vid real soon